Hey, YouTubers, Rival X Factor here. You're currently watching some Epicenter Rush Defense 64 Man Zerg style. And the first tip I have is bust your ass off the breakout because if you don't make it to a defendable spot, you'll probably never get to one. Early bird gets the worm, and there's a lot of worms right here. Mmm, tasty. Uh, the point of today's video is one of the most common questions I get asked is X Factor, what's your recording process? What do you use? What do you do? What have you learned? A lot of you guys know I've been around YouTube for a year. I'm just a baby. But I've tried a lot of stuff. I've gotten a lot of input from guys like Level Cap, uh, guys that are very successful and are audio files, video files, guys who know their shit. So I heavily lean upon them to kind of guide me, not to mention my trials and errors since playing Battlefield 3. Um, I used to record in Bad Company 2, but that was basically for, for league purposes and tournament purposes. But in Battlefield 3, we all know that I decided to build a channel to help you guys, to, to share my thought process and lessen your learning curve to help you guys become beasts. So I've tried a lot of stuff that's frustrated me, uh, that's wanted me to pull uh, my hair out of my head that does not exist anymore. So maybe we can learn together. Maybe we can discover some stuff. So the first thing I want to talk about is hardware, which is the, the necessity of what we're doing here. Uh, the first thing is, if you have one hard drive, this is going to be near impossible. No matter how monster your computer is, if you have an i7-3770K running at 5.5 megahertz, an SLI 990GTX cards, or ATI 10, over 9,000 cards, it's not going to work. Why is that? It's simple. Your hard drive, if you have one, is going to contain your operating system, it's going to contain your game, it's going to contain your Windows files, it's going to contain Mumble or Skype, the things you need to communicate. It is drawing off of that. Now you're going to ask the game to go write a file at about 60 megs a minute minimum up to about 100 megs a minute, minute minimum. It's just not strong enough. I don't know a drive in the world unless you've got eight bajillion dollars and want to buy some 500 gig or one terabyte solid state drives. So what happens to you? You have massive frame loss, you have stuttering, you have screen lag, you have all kinds of bad stuff that won't let you record. So if you have kick-ass footage, if you're a creative fellow, if you have a blast playing games and all of a sudden you're recording at 15 frames a second instead of 60, you're not going to have a lot of fun. I know I didn't when I had to learn the hard way. So let's talk about my old setup. If you look back on my original videos, here was my old setup. GTX 460, AMD 965 overclocked, 8 gigs of RAM, 2 hard drives. Tried it on one, and I got massive, massive lag. All right, so I went out and bought a black caviar, 64 megabit cache, uh, I think two terabyte drive, and made that my dedicated recording drive. So here became my setup. I had one drive, which had my operating system on it, had Battlefield on it, had Mumble on it. Uh, I think I had Photoshop on there and Sony Vegas on there. And the other drive was just used to record. So the only thing that drive did was had to write the file and then when I pulled it up, read the file. That's it. It was its sole purpose. It didn't have this crazy stuff going on in the background. On top of it, it had one sole purpose. Uh, and I also recorded with fraps. So what did that do? It minimized my frame loss. But fraps isn't the best solution. It's actually really, really bad, comparatively speaking. I've used fraps. I've used Bandicam. I've used MSI Afterburner. I've used Capture Cards. I've used DX Tori. I've used pretty much everything, and I want to cover that ground today. So the knock with Fraps is it's buggy. It also caps your frames at times. So you'll be ho-humming along and recording at 30 frames, and you're displaying 60 frames, and all of a sudden you're displaying 45 frames, and all of a sudden you're displaying 30 frames. And you can't really play on 30 frames, right? So it also has limited options. Uh, MSI Afterburner, I recommend this. It is an amazing free program which really doesn't dump out your frames. You don't have massive frame loss, but it does have some limitations and some audio issues when trying to pull uh, your voice off a mic or combining in-game volume and some other stuff. So it's a little quirky, and I know they've made improvements, so I'd recommend anybody checking that out, and that's MSI Afterburner. Uh, if you're on Xbox or PS3, you need a capture device. There are a ton of them out there, and some of the best ones are Aver Media. Now, you don't have this hardware problem, 
your PC can have one hard drive. It does not matter because you're only writing 50 to 70 megs a second, uh, a minute. So it, that's not going to kill you, right? Uh, due to the fact that your computer's dormant. It's just got Windows running on it, right? So get a nice capture card. Again, I recommend the Avermedia stuff. I'm going to post a couple links on hard drives that I use and Avermedia capture cards uh, that I use or I own. Uh, and again, there's a couple solutions out there for you console guys. So, Bandicam, I crashed all the time. Fraps, I actually crashed in the game every once in a while. MSI Afterburner, I never really crashed. But uh, I came across DX Tori and a recommendation. The most amazing software I've ever used simply due to its always being updated and the customization is never ending. You can add different audio sources on different files. So what happens is when I record audio or I record gameplay, I have gameplay line and then I have two audios. I have the gameplay audio coming in, then I have my mic audio coming in. So I could mute it, I could chop out my voice, uh, I can change the volumes of the ratio between the gameplay and my voice. It's limitless. Uh, it also has uh, GPU accelerators in it. It, it, can, it has multiple codecs. It has multiple different graphics settings. And here's my setting. I use the DX Tori codec. I record at 85% at a medium grade, medium quality. At 1080p, comes out beautifully, right? I think we could all see the improvements that my graphics has made, my rendering has made, and that's with the help of DX Tori. And then you can pick the frames. Do you want to record at 30? Do you want to record at 60? If you're doing a montage, do you want slow more or do something crazy at 90? You know, but don't forget, YouTube will only allow you to upload at 30 frames, right? So if you got something fancy in 60 frames, it's only going to take it at 30 frames. The only place, again, that helps is slow mo, right? So pick your software, pick your capture card, right? And make sure your hardware is set up properly. And again, I can't stress the hardware thing enough. If you don't have the right capture card, if you don't have the right software, this is not going to work for you. It's going to be very frustrating. Please learn from my many mistakes and my trial and error. Uh, so let's talk about this. I thought, X Factor, you have a capture card. Yep, I do, and I will be using it, but I ran into a problem. The Avermedia HD Live Gamer, which is a, roughly a $200 capture card, is absolutely amazing. The problem is it can't capture my voice off a USB, uh, USB drive. So I bought a bunch of parts. I had, and uh, I think you guys have seen the posts on my Beast computer that I'm building. The point of that is, is I'm going to have a dedicated recording and streaming computer. I'm going to be getting rid of the USB G35s, and not because I don't like them. They're amazing headset. But for recording purposes, I need to change my setup. Number one, uh, I do have frame loss when I record. I lose 15 to 20 frames on the Aftermath maps in 64, man. There's a lot of shit going on. On vanilla and stuff like that, close quarters, I lose 10 to 15, right? Not the end of the world, but I want to keep my frames above 120, and sometimes that's not possible. Uh, right now, I stream. I'm getting back into streaming, and I tested this the other day. When I stream, I use a program called XSplit on the same computer. When that happens, I lose 50 to 60 frames a second. Sometimes I dip to 50, 60, 70, back up to 100, back down to 50. It is not good. It creates a jerkiness, a stutterness. Uh, it is not good for me. So I've transitioned through a lot of stuff since the starting of recording. Again, my recommendations are there for getting started. And very soon, I'll have a different headset. I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. And I'm going to hook the two computers together. So the computer that I'm currently recording on and playing on will do zero recording. The computer next to me will do all of the recording, all of the heavy lifting. So I'll have 120 plus frames on every map on crazy settings if I wanted to, not stressing it. And that's the point of it. Record so it doesn't affect your performance or outcome. So let's talk about my process real quick while recording. I save everything. I record everything. Every time I'm done with a game, I alt-tab, I name the file. For instance, this one's called Worst Rape I've Ever Seen, Aftermath, Epicenter, Defense. Or if I'm recording for Control Freak, I'll put MP7 Hipfire, Close Quarters, Bizarre, whatever round it is. I keep everything for a couple days. 
I then go through because my time is limited due to my career, my family, and I'm not an editor. I don't make montages. I wish I did, but sometimes I have crazy footage that never sees the light of the day. It might have had a crazy kill streak in it, in the middle of it, or a 2,000 point run, and I simply delete the file because it was just a normal mundane round, and I don't feel like commentating over a 15 minute uh, round, right? Because that's time consuming for me. So I'll delete the whole thing. Or I'll take that little clip, render it out, and it goes on its own separate hard drive. Okay? So I qualify the clips. I record with purpose. Or sometimes I just keep the stuff around because it was a crazy round, uh, much like this one. Uh, and that's a question I have for you guys. I have some crazy rounds that never see the light of day. And I don't have time to commentate over the entire thing. But there's some crazy kill streaks. It was a close round. It was highly competitive. Here's the question. And this is where you guys come to play. Because a lot of you guys say, well, why don't you upload more full rounds? I don't have the time to edit it. I don't have the time to commentate over some of it. So here's the question. If I upload one or two full rounds a week, and I just commentate, let's say, over the first five or six minutes, talk about some of my thought processes real quick, and let just the gameplay play, would you guys find value in that? Because a lot of people say, well, I learn from just watching you play. I don't speak English very well. I don't understand but I learn, I see what you see, I hear what you hear. So that's my proposal to you guys. One, maybe two a week, various map styles, various weapons, trying new stuff, because again, we learn with our eyes and we learn with our ears. So maybe this will help you guys out. Hopefully you guys found this guide kind of helpful. I will be posting hardware that I recommend down below uh, if you're a PC person and some capture cards if you play on the old console. I've had a lot of fun doing this with you, you guys, uh, doing this YouTube channel. And again, I'm a baby in this. This is my first year doing this. So I've made a lot of mistakes recording. I've learned a lot of stuff. And hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes and not make the same frustrating ones. Because it is so frustrating when you think you've got the right setup. You go to press record and nothing works right. Thanks for watching YouTube, and as always, thanks for supporting me. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to give me the old thumbs up. And if you're on the other team, I am so sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll see you guys soon.